and thank you to the gallery for having me. I, I really am sorry that I don't speak French, truly, but I won't even try because it would be embarrassing. <laughs> Um, Olivier has translated three poems of mine, so we're going to start with those. I'll read one, and then he'll read his translation, and we'll go through those three, and then I'll just continue to read in English, and we'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read first some poems from Money Shot, which is my most recent book. Staging. Everything will be made new. The precision coupling and uncoupling, the studied blocking and folding have already begun. Stillness of gauzy curtains and the sound of distant vacuums. Prolonged sigh of traffic and the downward curve of fronds. The spray of all possible paths define possible. C'est un travail en cours de même. Phasé. 1. Tout sera mis à neuf. La précision couplée et découplée, les blocages et pliages étudiés ont déjà commencé. 2. Immobilité des rideaux de gaz et le son de vide distant, murmure plongé de la circulation et la courbe descendante des fronts. Vaporisation de tous les chemins possibles, définir le possible. Second person. <laughs> Lemons, lanterns, hang late into the evening. But you are known for your voluptuous retreat, for leaving your absence on the air, illicit, thin. I know you think, I wonder if you think of me. This reflection spins a bead on a string. I can take it with me. Deuxième personne. Citron, lanterne, pend du tard dans le soir. Mais tu es connu pour ta retraite voluptueuse. Tu laisses ton absence en l'air, illicite, mince. Tu penses, je sais, que je me demande si tu penses à moi. Se réfléchir en brille, perle sur fil. Je peux l'emporter avec moi. Soft money. They're sexy because they're needy, which degrades them. They're sexy because they don't need you. They're sexy because they pretend not to need you, but they're lying, which degrades them. They're beneath you. And it's hot. They're across the border, rhymes with dancer. They don't need to understand. They're content to be not mean, which degrades them and is sweet. They want to be the thing in itself and the thing for you. Miss thing, but can't. They want to be you, but can't. Which is so hot. Cette traduction est une collaboration avec Kenji Amino, la poète américaine. Euh, on a traduit le, le, le poème à deux. Argent flou. Ils sont sexy car dans le besoin, ce qui les déshonore. Ils sont sexy car ils n'ont pas besoin de toi. Ils sont sexy car ils prétendent ne pas avoir besoin de toi. Sauf qu'ils mentent, ce qui les déshonore. Ils sont en dessous de toi. Excitant. Ils sont de l'autre côté de la frontière, ça rime avec danseur. Ils n'ont pas besoin de comprendre. Ils sont contents d'être, pas signifiants. Ce qui les déshonore, c'est touchant. Ils veulent être la chose en soi, qui est la chose pour toi. Miss chose. Mais ils ne peuvent pas. Ils veulent être toi, mais ils ne peuvent pas. Tellement excitant. Thank you. said, 
I am aware of weighing options, of dither, but the moment of decision has always remained obscure. Which one of these do you most closely resemble? Green stucco bungalow, four brown gargoyles on its flat roof, beehive diva, rehab idol, semi-transparent, each stinging jelly is a colony. <coughs> Fuel. The sun on my back, like your hand, at night, in bed. And then again, your hand on my back at night, like the sun has burned through two-thirds of its fuel. That you adorn the fallen, that your heads and shafts are smooth, cool, a spongy marble, that you are stock still and spontaneous at once, that you are one, as we always thought we knew. This next poem refers back to that one to some extent, so they're sort of a set. The gift. You confuse the image of a fungus with the image of a dick in my poem. Understandably. <laughs> and three days later, a strange toadstool. White shaft, black cap, five inches tall, appears between the flagstones in your path. We note the invisible web between fence posts in which dry leaves are gently rocked. And I wrote this um, the day in fall of 2008, I guess, when the um, stock market in the United States lost about half its value in one day during the, uh, the derivatives, real estate, et cetera, um, the bottle. So, bubble wrap. Want to turn on CNN, see if there have been any disasters? In the dream, you slip inside me. Ponzi scheme, rhyme scheme. The child wants his mother to put her head where his is, see what he sees. In the dream, inside the dream, our new roommates are arguing. These are not astroturf calls, and we're all populists now. Now, an engine's single indrawn breath, the black hole at the heart of it is taking it all back. An immigrant sells scorpions of twisted electrical wire in front of the right aid. Right aid in pharmacy. Answer. A moment of stillness demanding an answer. When does a moment end? Starbucks prayer. Make morning good again. <laughs> Leave shadows on pavement. Word meaning to slide carelessly, repeatedly, to absent-mindedly caress. For I so loved the world that I set up my only son, to be arrested. Now, there's probably no way you would get that last bit unless you had read um, the King James Version of the Bible, but there is a verse in that where uh, the ghost, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, etc., etc., et So I'm just sort of playing God with that thing. But sometimes people ask me, you got your son arrested? <laughs> 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 um, I've been one of one of ten poets working on a sort of quasi-autobiographical project called the Grand Piano. Uh, a, a group of the poets known as the, the language poets. Um, on the West Coast decided that they would kind of revisit that the time when we were really a group and write about that. But I always find it 
difficult to write autobiography. For one thing, my memory is just not very good, not really precise. And for another thing, you always have to kind of decide what voice you're going to talk about yourself in, you know, so there's kind of division between the speaking I and the, and the, the person that's being talked about. So I, I wrote this poem about the difficulties of autobiography. It's also about some references to Keats, some lines from Keats in it, which you might or might not get. Autobiography, earn burial. I could say authenticity will have been about trying to overtake the past, inhabit it long enough to look around, say, oh, but the past is tricky, holds off. So are we really moving? Or is this something like the way form appears to chase function? I might hazard that my life's course has been somewhat unusual. When I say that, I hear both an eager claim and a sentence that attempts to distance itself by adopting the style of a 19th century English gentleman. The failed authority of such sentences is soothing, like watching masterpiece theater. When I recount my experiences, whatever they may have been, I'm aware of piping tunes I've heard before, or jumbled snatches of familiar tunes. The fancy cannot cheat for very long, can it? In the moment of experience, one may drown while another looks on. Outage. We like to think that the mind controls the body. We send the body on a mission. We don't feel the body, but we receive conflicting reports. The body is catching flack or flies. The body is sprouting grapefruit. The body is underperforming in heavy trading. Reception is spotty. Someone just like me is born in the future and I don't feel a thing? Like only goes so far. Money Talks. This book, Money Shot, has, uh, is, features money as a, as a, a sort of uh, motif, I guess. So there are a lot of pieces that reference money. Money Talks. Money is talking to itself again in this season's bondage and safari look, its close-out camouflage. Hit the refresh button, and this is what you get. Money pretending that its hands are tied. On a billboard by the 880, money admonishes shut up and play. Win. Card in the mail. Win a free cremation. <laughs> On the tablecloth, a scatter. Grains of salt. Sugar, a glow. It works for me, gracious wood grain supplying what I like best, an illusion of passage. So now I'm going to read some poems from a new manuscript that's going to come out in about a year and a half or two years called Just Saying. This one um, I actually wrote after having a lunchtime conversation with an astrophysicist I've always been interested for, for a long time in physics, but of course I couldn't claim to understand it that well. A lot, a lot of it is, seems very mysterious, so I thought I would um, go to uh, go out to lunch with this astrophysicist who works at the university where I work and ask him some questions. And I did, but I think that my questions were, were probably not quite the right questions. And so he was a little puzzled, and then I was, I was of course, puzzled by his answers. So I turned it into a kind of comic uh, faux dialogue. Faux, that's a French word. <laughs> 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 Account. Light was on its way from nothing to nowhere. 
Light was all business. Light was full speed. When it got interrupted. Interrupted by what? When it got tangled up and broke into opposite. Broke into brand new things. What kinds of things? <laughs> Drinking cup. Thinking of you. Convenience ballet. How could speed take shape? Hush, do you want me to start over? <laughs> the fading laser pulse, information describing the fading laser pulse, is stored, is encoded in the spin states of atoms. God is balancing his checkbook. God is encrypting his account. This is taking forever. <laughs> Someone told me before I got here to be aware that French audiences are very quiet, but I don't find that to be the case, which is good. Arrivals. Sign in the airport. It's not how much cloud, but what kind. Welcome. We don't play requests, but we don't play bagpipes either. We figure that's fair. <laughs> That's the bad boy sass of globalization kickstarting you on clear channel, where even the spin gets spun. Here's one. The devil is a blousy, failed executive who, who fires burnouts, star after star. Every known object rotates as if B, keeping busy, C, Stunned. The lousy executive, a failed executive I had in mind was Donald Trump, who, as you may know, was for a moment uh, a, ca a presidential candidate, at least in his own mind. <laughs> My apocalypse. A woman writes to ask how far along I am with fish made from a dollar bill. After the apocalypse, we will all be in a band. We will understand each other perfectly. It's all right and it doesn't matter. Let it stand for nothing. A weathered, fleshy bicyclist wearing bunny ears and a tie-dyed shirt says zoom as she coasts past. Transactions. What do we like best about ourselves? Our inability to be content. We might see this restlessness as a chip not yet cashed in. You appear because you're lonely. Maybe you would not say that. You come to tell me you're saving money by cooking for yourself. You've figured out what units you'll need to exchange for units, if you intend. I know I mustn't interrupt. Hectic and flexible flames are ideal new bodies for us. The thinning. These guys try to make us match moods to products the way once, under love's spell, we attached meaning to sound, attached sounds to objects. The old magic won't work now, but it's nice to be reminded of it. She's a tease, tears her skirts off one by one, really? Drops her petals as if she could always make more. It's tiresome. We know what she looks like, naked. On a cold night, we can see forever. <laughs> this I started to write when I was asked to contribute to um, something called a writer's thesaurus. But I was told that, that the writers who would contribute to it were allowed to be sort of loose and fanciful in their definitions of words. So I decided I would do the words furious. 
and which means something like bogus uh, foe. Uh, you know. <laughs> so this poem uh, is not the entry that I wrote for the thesaurus, but it kind of grew out of it, and it has to do with kind of um, you know false etymologies, I guess. And tense and tenuous grow from the same root, as does tender in its several guises, the sour grass flower, the yellow moth. I would not confuse the bogus with the spurious. The bogus is a sore thumb, while the spurious pours forth as fish and circuses. Treatment. This is actually the plot of a movie, a real movie, but I just turned it into a poem. Treatment. The relationship between a handsome young broker and a lovely young curator is in trouble. Before they can marry, he must come to tolerate, then feel guarded affection for a good-natured buffoon who populates dioramas with stuffed mouse couples in period dress. <coughs> then for an assortment of others, some less likable, who also take passionate interest in an activity that generates no profit. <laughs> Art. <laughs> <laughs> Progress. The thickness of sleep. The sense of swarm, of nebulous propagation, from which we wake by narrowing, sharpening our focus. The three weird sisters are you, babbling, in drag, but what's so strange about that? They foresee your downfall, but urge you on. Where is there to go but down? You want to go, don't you? If we think dying is like falling asleep, then we believe, wrongly, rightly, that it's a way of sinking into what happens, joining the program in progress. Experts. I met a genius. He's an expert on tourniquets. No turncoats. No tunicates. He knows everything there is to know about sea squirts. He knows what it's like. We coordinate our thrusts by habit to minimize distraction. If an algorithm has proved useful, we believe in one. God. We close our eyes or stare at a non-existent horizon as if listening for something vital, faint, some emerging consensus in the background chatter. When certainty is high, we grunt or yelp. The agreed upon signal, one of us does. Bardos. Some say the soul hangs from the ceiling when the doctor pronounces the body dead, and afterwards, perhaps, watches crises in the lives of strangers, bored as we are here. What volumes speak volumes? One claims he can recreate the sound of a family argument using bankrupt fishermen and oil execs to represent dead relatives. One uses leathery maroon tongues writhing, laced up both sides with gray, sharp-toothed spines. I've been telling someone, a cipher, emphatically, how unfair it is that so-and-so, a killer, is angry at his boyfriend, girlfriend, unclear, for being a truck stop for when... <laughs> Just uh, three more. Luster. What flickers with some delicacy of feeling, some hesitancy, and then persists? What circles? What darks? Hunger is like the inside biting you. Like is like insomnia. 
These green cherry tomatoes, their false pregnancies, staked, lustrous. That's all I meant. All I meant by witches. Stop and go. Long burst of tweets. We wait to see if it picks up again from the same place. The place we came from? Stop. I know this one. It goes everything, a metaphor for sensation. And this one takes just a, it's the last one I'll read. It takes just a little bit of explanation. I was invited to participate in a project um, where the organizers asked various poets to rewrite in some form a, a sonnet by Shakespeare. And my first reaction was, that's crazy, you know, because my, what are you going to do except do something worse than the sonnet by Shakespeare? <laughs> but then I decided I didn't have to copy the sonnet, you know, technically in any way. I just decided to deal with the subject matter. And the subject matter it was one of his early sonnet three, so it was one of his early sonnets, and it's one of what they call the procreation sonnets, in which for whatever reason, and it's pretty obscure, he's trying to persuade a young man, a pretty beautiful young man apparently, uh, that the young man should have children, reproduce, so that his image, the young man's image, will be will continue into the future generations. So it's kind of unclear why, whether Shakespeare, whether this is a really indirect way for Shakespeare to say that he's hot for the young man, or whether maybe uh, he works for the young man's father, the, the father's his patron, and the father wants the young man to have children. Whatever, it's a little unclear. So I decided to kind of run with that ambiguity in this, in this. Sonnet three. Your dad told me to tell you how good you look to him right now. <laughs> Check yourself out. I'm sure you do. <laughs> You're a very pretty boy. But the thing is, that won't last. Have you ever seen a pert old man? <laughs> An insouciant septuagenarian? I thought not. They're invisible. And you'll be invisible too. What will your dad have to look at then? Do you think growth rebounds each year? Wrong. It has to be outsourced. Sublet. Get with the program. Your dad will be watching.